Hey guys, it's Tadiko Pantoa, and today I'd like to talk about how you can be more sustaining as an independent artist or animator. So this might be good for someone who is, for example, a professional artist going into the indie scene or just an independent artist with zero professional scene in general. One of the reasons why people want to go more indie or they want to be more solo, maybe live the freelance life, is so that they can be more flexible with their own lifestyle and their own choices. But in order for that to work, you also have to be self-sustainable. And when I talk about self-sustaining, I mean not having a lot of outside assistance or keeping it to a minimum. Or in this case, not having to depend on outside work. So you can say that freelance does fall into this category. And I just want to let you know that these are not absolute things that you have to do to become stable. These are just suggestions, and these are things that I've done personally. Number one would be also to look into passive income plans, whether it's things like investing, real estate, or stocks. But to be honest, not many animators really do care about this stuff. So for me, for example, my passive income comes from my YouTube revenue, my Gumroad tutorial sales, and other outlets where I do sell educational material. You could make a brush pack and sell that online through a site like Gumroad. You could make a sketchbook, some tips and tricks, and put it online for people to donate to you if they want to get it. You could even consider Patreon for people to support what you do and who you are as a creator. I would say start small first, feel the scope, and eventually start building more plans for bigger passive income. Another great passive income plan would be also to look into merchandising. Whether it's selling shirts, hats, other apparels and clothing, you could also sell toys or just merch in general that lines up with your brand or whatever you're going with. Number two, invest in original content and stories. Stories are great and stories or original content really speak the voice of who you are as a person, an artist, and a creator. So like I said in my previous videos about personal projects, you can get an average Joe working in animation, has the skills and you know is really good, but there's a lot of people like this person. So if you have a person that's like him in terms of skill wise, but has their own unique voice, their own tastes, and their own sort of aesthetic, it makes them stand out more. So let's say you start a comic that's just based on an idea that you wanted to do or something that's personal to you. And the more you do it, the more you're gonna gain followers, the more people are willing to support you. And eventually that can be a career or opportunity on its own. Maybe combine your other talents with your original content. And whatever original content you decide to do, people are more likely to remember or recognize you based on that work alone. They're not going to only look at you as a studio veteran, but a person who's responsible for creating this and that. How cool would that be? And if people just wanted to look forward to you making more of that, again, that's sort of living the dream. You get paid to be able to make the things that you're passionate about. Also with original stories, you can turn it into a graphic novel, a comic, an animated short, or you can actually use it to develop a pitch bible if you want to pitch it as something bigger for a studio. Number three, try teaching and running an online course. The great thing about the modern day is that the internet has gotten so good to be able to run Zoom meetings and actual classes where people can submit and stream lessons. So if you wanted to teach storyboarding or the process of filmmaking and animation or animation in general, then you can start an online course and get people to sign up and pay via online. I feel like teaching is a great skill to learn and if you want to become a director or creative lead, I would suggest teaching since it deals with a lot of communication, delegation, and fully understanding why you make the choices that you make. So imagine you started teaching a class, let's say you get 20 students and each of them pay $400 for 10 sessions. In total, that would be about $8,000. And if you ran this class by yourself, it all goes to you. So I think it's worth looking into, especially for other ways of income. Number four, invest in your social media. Now, I have a lot of opinions when it comes to social media, but if we think about the good things from social media, such as exposure, building a following, and making yourself visible to the community, I think social media is a great thing to invest in. The great thing about social media is that people who do follow you can keep in track in what you're up to, you can keep them updated in projects that you're working on, you can make special announcements, or you can let people know that you're available for work. Because let's be honest, recruiters do look at social media nowadays. For social media, you don't need to have hundreds and thousands of followers. You just need to have a platform that you're active on. Social media is so mainstream that when I type my name on Google, the top few tabs will just be my most recent posts from Twitter. So yeah, it's a great way to keep everyone updated about yourself, 
a great way to keep updated with the community, and in general, just making you more visible. This will help in your original projects where you can announce that you're working on a personal project and people will know about it and they can support it. You can also use social media to announce that you're teaching and therefore people will know that you're teaching a course. Social media has given us the opportunity to become more accessible to everyone and to be able to invest in ourselves. Number five, invest in a YouTube channel. I treat YouTube and general social media like Twitter and Instagram different from each other. I use YouTube to just make videos about my thoughts, to express myself, to share animation. I don't really use it to network, to form communities, or to be part of some group. But I use it to show my thought process, my process videos, how I go about certain solutions, tutorials, and a great outlet to present my own animation work. With YouTube, because it's video and sound format, you can totally utilize this media to really present yourself, to talk about who you are, to showcase your work. You can use it as a demo reel or portfolio about yourself. Nowadays, the product is basically you. There were a few times where I was invited to talk at certain conventions, at expositions, and of course, a lot of it was discovered through my YouTube channel. And you can treat YouTube any how you want. Some people are performers or they like to show themselves in front of a camera. I usually don't like talking in front of a camera. Some people will play a character. I just have my voice with process videos and that's fine already. The great thing about YouTube is that you can also make money out of the watch retention. So whatever video you upload, you are bound to make revenue out of it just based on how long people are watching those videos. And combine that with a lot of viewership. YouTube is another great plan for passive income. But all in all, YouTube is a great way to just express who you are, yourself, and your work. It's also a great way to share thoughts, advice, and things like that, like I'm doing here right now. Honestly, I think YouTube needs more of those animation voices. There's only a few of us, and it would be great to get different points of views when it comes to animation or the industry. So for example, if you were an animator based in Asia, what's it like being an Asian animator over there? What's the industry seen like internationally? What are your strategies when you produce your own work or you start creating original content? This is stuff worth sharing. People are going to look for that information. People are gonna try and find these videos on YouTube. And if you have something to say about that stuff, you can broaden a lot of prospective creators scope. So you can inspire them to think more independently and maybe invest more in their own stuff. On the other hand, you can use that watch time to make revenue. Just minimize your living expenses. There's a lot of people who want to become more self-independent or self-sustaining as an artist or animator. But in most cases, you don't have the luxury to have an expensive lifestyle. So that's when you have to minimize your living expenses or find ways to save money. I personally don't think there's a shame to living with your parents, with family. If they're supportive of that and you're saving money that way, that's actually an advantage. And once you gain more followers, more subscribers, you get more fame and people know who you are, you're getting support left and right, you're probably getting a lot of freelance work, then the whole idea of living minimal will just be more sidetracked. It won't be such a big thing. But the thing about going indie or being more self-sustaining at first is you do have to take risks and you do have to sacrifice a few things. When I minimize my living expenses, I usually think about my total spendings per, per month and then I'll try and save 20 to 40% of those spendings. So I'll avoid going out to eat as much or be self-indulgent and buy things. I'll only spend for necessities or things regarding to a project that I'm working on. This is something I usually do when I'm off work or I'm in a transition of switching jobs. But I think it's a good habit to develop, especially when you're starting to be more independent or self-sustaining. Last but not least, keep making stuff outside of work. And again, it doesn't need to be the most perfect thing. It could just be a sketch. It could just be an experimentation. It could just be something small. And then just keep posting stuff on social media, on a platform, so people know that you're active. And eventually people will know exactly who you are as an individual, just from your art and just from you constantly posting. Nowadays, we live in an age where, again, social media plays such a huge role and the internet is there to give us a platform where we can be seen. And being seen can eventually lead to more opportunities. So that's all I want to talk about. The last thing I want to add is that when people became more indie and went towards a more self-sustaining lifestyle, they also found more of their voice. One of my friends became more of an art coach rather than just a mere artist. Another friend was getting a lot of freelance, a lot more love, so he had the opportunity to build his own studio outside of LA. Another friend became well known for her independent comics, which she would post on Instagram. Now she's getting her own book deal. 
But all these people had to take risks to become more self-sustaining. Some people had to move out of LA to have a cheaper lifestyle so they can perform these things they've always wanted to do. Some decided to teach multiple times during the week. Therefore, they could build the fund and budget to start their own productions. And some discovered new passions like that friend of mine who became an art coach. But the reason why all of it worked was because they had a plan for themselves so they could be self-sustainable. Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.